One week ago, we entered the eastern Azerbaijan province of Iran and reached the city of Karpets, Tabriz. This country is slightly confusing. They even live in a different year. In the Islamic Republic, they somehow do not count the years since Jesus' birth. For a brief period before the Iranian Revolution, they even advanced into the 26th century. But then the supreme leader decided to go back to the future and now they write the 14th century, which in some way might be more fitting. Contrary to popular belief in the Western world, the Iranians we met so far have been exceptionally friendly, welcoming and inviting. Let's hope this doesn't change in week two of bike touring Persia, which until now has been a wonderful explosion for our senses. Also, it seems like almost everyone is at least a multi-millionaire. But they just don't get the concept of value for money, so everything is obscenely overpriced. We are leaving Tabriz. We stayed here the last three days and this was one of the cheapest options with a private room and a private bathroom for 400 Toman per night, which is about 4 million real, so roughly 8 euros, 750 per night. Granted, if this place has seen better days, that must have been quite some time ago. However, planning to spend three months in the country, we need to be thoughtful with our finite amount of cash. Foreign credit cards do not work in Iran, so running out of money before leaving the country is a concern. To stay on a low budget, we want to camp whenever possible. But soon enough, we will learn that this is much harder to do in Iran than we imagined. I was wondering why the roads are so quiet this morning. Uh, and then I remembered it's Friday and that's the equivalent of a Sunday in Iran. We've decided on a rough route. We'll go through Kurdistan, which is much more mountainous, but likely to be way more beautiful than the main road to Tehran. We are heading south, southeast, towards massive Lake Urmia. Or at least that's what we thought. After roughly 75 kilometers of fighting our way through a mostly dry and barren landscape, we just want to put our tent down. It's been a very hot day, with steady headwinds slowing us down considerably. While looking for a place for our tent, the wind is picking up a notch. Last night we slept in this uh, old stone quarry. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not being used anymore. There's no equipment anywhere. We're close to Lake Urmia uh, and that's why we got into a little sandstorm in the evening um, and yeah, it was really really windy. So we put our tent here in this little corner to not fly away. Today we will continue to burn up and I think tomorrow or the day after tomorrow we'll leave this Azerbaijan region and get into Iranian Kurdistan or Eastern Kurdistan. So how was that violent sandstorm connected to Lake Urmia? What used to be the largest lake in the Middle East and the sixth largest saltwater lake on Earth has shrunk to just 10% of its former size due to climate change, persistent drought as well as the overuse of its inlets and groundwater. Since 2018 a river has been partially diverted and is slowly refilling the salty desert with water. By the way, we fixed our broken tent pole. We made this. It's a piece of steel pipe, just a tiny little bigger in diameter than the tent poles. Slip that over the crack, hold it in place with the tape and now it's fine again. 
We have had more comfortable nights, but at least it has been memorable. We're just on the road for two kilometers and met these two old lads from Tabriz. Who would have thought that we meet cyclists from Iran? They're from Tabriz. Um, and going on a little tour here, fully packed in his age. I hope I will do that in his time as well. Correlation between my belly and the speed on the climb. Or is there? <laughs> Please tell me no. Asad is brewing coffee with his hand. This is insane. So he already prepared two coffees for us. He has uh, hot water in his uh, can. And then this, he puts the coffee inside and then he presses it. And there you have it, coffee. Asad and Ahmed ride at a fast pace and we struggle to keep up. They want to show us a famous kebab restaurant in Bonab, the next city. What you do with the kebab is that you sprinkle it with the lemon and then um, there's onions. Yeah, mash it all up apparently and then eat it with bread. Ooh. <laughs> By the way, this is beef kebab. Asad shows us how to do it. Yes. Asad as Tabriz. Mm -hmm. Asad from Tabriz. Ahmed as Tabriz. And Ahmed. Asad and Ahmed from Tabriz. <laughs> mm. That looks really good. So I'll dig in two. Very hungry, we didn't have breakfast because we met these two gentlemen on the road and it was so fun to ride with them. And now we're here in the best kebab place in Bona. Bon Appetit! Bye! The traditional kebab was excellent. They also did not allow us to pay the bill. The two are now heading north to a village where one of them owns a house. They invited us to stay, but we did not feel like a 40 km detour, so we continue southeast, pushing against the headwind again. It's a very windy and dusty day. The last two days have been exhausting. We are tired and want to find a place for our tent as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the gas station is not suitable. Now this is brilliant. It's very windy. We were looking for a place to camp. We asked at the gas station, they said, go 10 kilometers over this hill and there's a city and you can camp in the city park. That's not so good, we're a little tired. So we see this field and there's some trees and we thought, oh, behind the trees might be good. And there was a man working in the field and he immediately waved at us and now uh, he even allows us to camp in his uh, little hut here which is perfect because then wind is no problem, right? So, Iran, uh, week two, again, amazing, fantastic. What the hell, please? <laughs> Mustafa's uh, little hut and just when we were about to leave he and his farmer neighbors arrived for work 
so we could say goodbye, that was amazing. And now, back on the road. The vast majority of the farmland seems to be irrigated by gasoline-powered pumps of ancient appearance. They chuck along all over the place 24 hours a day. This might be one result of the heavily subsidized fuel price of barely 3 cents US a liter, which is less than bottled water. watermelon and a package of uh, crisps as a gift. It's very dangerous when we stop somewhere. People will give us things immediately. Wow. Right now we're looking for a place to have a little breakfast. Uh, but in any case we have a watermelon, right? <laughs> Amazing. So, she got the omelette and I have meat with tomato. Chad, 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 After this hearty brunch, it is an easy ride to the next city where we are invited by a warm showers host. Welcome to Mian Doab, today's target. We stopped to make a picture of the little mosque behind us uh, and almost overlooked the true sight in this place. It's a little bit loud here, the trucks and everything. So look at this, I mean, this is amazing. Everyone saying hello to us, talking, yeah. We arrived yesterday in Mian Doab and were hosted by Sayat and his friend Hadi. Hadi. <laughs> Thank you very much for You're hosting welcome. us here. You're yes. welcome. Uh, you are very strange, but you are now uh, my friends. Yes. 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 This is just one example of how great people here are. So, <laughs> Bye bye. Khoda hafiz miandob. Khoda hafiz miandob. And off to Buka we go to Kurdistan. Woohoo! Another language we don't understand. During the last three millennia, Persian empires dominated a vast part of the Near East. As a result, modern-day Iran is a multi-ethnic state. We are excited in the anticipation of the cultural shifts this might bring. After all, experiencing and trying to understand different cultures is one of our major motivations. Miandoab has an Azeri-Turkic-speaking population, which is the biggest minority in Iran. In the next city, people already speak Kurdish, the second largest minority group. However, all schools, universities and government-related communications have to be in Persian, Farsi in all of Iran. Hello, everyone wants to invite us for some tea. 
if we take all the offers, we would go nowhere. <laughs> We kind of got used to being greeted on the road, especially so in Iran. Still, it feels like people are becoming even more welcoming and hospitable. Naturally, there are regional variations. For example, it appears to us that there is a strong negative correlation with the amount of travelers on fully loaded bicycles people get to see. No, there aren't many foreigners, least of all Westerners around here. Actually, we haven't noticed a single one since we entered Iran, so here in the countryside we are a curiosity. It is wonderful to see how excited they are that we cycled so far to where they live. There's little worth visiting around here, except probably the most worthwhile for us, genuine people unspoiled by mass tourism. Of course, there are also strong historical and cultural components to how locals respond to us. In Iran, that might also be connected to the history of the ancient Silk Road. So hosting guests from very distant parts of the world has a long tradition. Last but certainly not least, religion is another important factor. Hospitality is a virtue that lies at the very basis of the Islamic ethical system, a concept rooted in the pre-Islamic Bedouin virtues of welcome and generosity in the harsh desert environment. Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said, there is no good in the one who is not hospitable. Salam. 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 Matthias, Arev, you? Uh, Hussein, Ahmad. Your name? Name? Um, Ali, Hussein. Mustafa. Rustam, Rustam. 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 Rustam, Rustam. Ah. Rustam is Sayyadi. Rustam Sayyadi. Sayyadi. Ah. Um, uh, from Bukan. 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 At Bunab. Bunab. Ah, Bunab. Several tea invitations and getting stopped in the road a couple of times slowed us down considerably, but it's also wonderful. 
We just met these nice guys. They are Kurdish from Pukat, right? Uh, Jumanji Kurdish. Uh, they are teaching us the first words in Kurdish to say hello and thanks, uh, which is amazing. That's that question. Slow! We immediately start using our newly acquired language skills. The Kurdish spoken in this part of Iran is Sorani, or Central Kurdish. It is very different from Kurmanji, or Northern Kurdish, which is predominantly spoken in Southeast Turkey. Jumanji, however, is a 1995 American fantasy comedy adventure film. The story centers on a supernatural board game that releases jungle-based hazards on its players. In case you have already binged all episodes of our amazing World Bike Tour, go ahead and watch Jumanji. But rest assured, it has zero connection to the Kurdish language family. We are getting closer to Bukan, the first big Kurdish city. Zamya 24, basically a Nissan heavy duty pickup truck, the workhorse of the Iranian economy, it seems. It's early afternoon, we are a little tired and quite hungry. We have had plenty of tea and loads of sugar, but no lunch. Around that time of the day, we often also start thinking about where we might end up for the night. When we stop on the side of the road to orient ourselves, things start happening fast and suddenly we even get a phone call. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sayad's uh, older brother has an apartment here in this town and he said yesterday when we make it uh, to Bukhan we can stay a night in his apartment. Now actually someone called me speaking German, he's a German teacher from the city and now they're trying to find a way to get us to the place. <laughs> actually I got a bit confused there. While I make plans with a German teacher via phone, a little crowd gathers chatting with Arif at the same time. Uh, it's a Kyrgyz bread. We, uh, we often eat for breakfast and lunch. Once you want to uh, invite you both to his home, we want to make you Kyrgyz food. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's really serious. Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Do you accept the offer? Um, I will speak to him and then we decide. His boss? The, we are uh, equal. <laughs> we finally figured it out. We're going to Sakes. Now we find something in the city center to eat. Bye bye. As Matthias already accepted the invitation of the German teacher from the next city, we only have time for a quick bite. So the big crowd is gone, but uh, we just uh, found Mohammed again in the city center. Oh, there he is. And we'll go and try to find some Kurdish food somewhere. He is in this taxi. Let's go. As it's way past lunchtime, proper restaurants are already closed. But Mohammed finds this local takeaway shop for us. Very nice and local place. It seems like he has to convince the ladies that we are not looking for a lavish meal, but a simple snack. Eating in their kitchen is actually perfectly good for us. They call it pirashni, uh -huh. which is funny because it sounds like Russian pirash. Yeah. Mm, so it's dough, little, almost crispy, not really. Mm, filled with mushroom and I think there's sausage and mm, all sorts of tasty stuff. Nice. Ah, thank you. What is it? Doklio. 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 And this is like kufta. Ah. Matthias, what's going on? 
So we are trying now to get to Sakes. Uh, he's but a German why, teacher. Why, why are we taking a car to Sakes? We could well, cycle. Well, because they wanted to ride us today and we are too tired to cycle that ah. distance. So he said, uh, we do it with a car. Herzlich willkommen bei uns. Ich wünsche <laughs> Ihnen einen sehr guten, angenehmen Aufenthalt. Und dann los geht's. Yeah, super. <laughs> It would be a massive understatement to say that I was fairly skeptical about putting our two bicycles in the trunk of a Peugeot Pass. However, as it turns out, they don't need to fit inside entirely. Magic happens, uh, the bicycles are in the car. Now let's see how we get to the suckers. Unbelievable, these people are unbelievable. We could have stayed in Sayad's brother's apartment in Bukan or take Muhammad's spontaneous offer. But as it turns out, Sharam, the German teacher from Suckers, had gotten our phone number from another Warmshaus host. He won me over on the phone with his well-chosen, formal and almost accent-free German. Achte darauf, achte darauf. Wir haben keine Okay. Achten Sie. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Noch einmal, noch einmal. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Das habt ihr alle. Okay. Ja, gut Job. Das war großartig. Okay. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. That's a lot. We are going to a Kurdish wedding. And now we are training Kurdish dances, which is a lot of shoulders. <laughs> It has a very complicated footwork. You need to move the shoulders as well. Good gemacht. Join us again next time when we continue our epic journey and explore all things Kurdistan. There won't be much cycling, but we certainly compensate for the physical part. A massive thanks to our amazing contributors on buymeacoffee.com, especially to Penny and Barry, Guy and Jim, who have been supporting us for over a year now. Producing this kind of long-format travel documentary takes ridiculous amounts of time, effort, money and, of course, coffee. We love taking you with us and every single contribution helps us to get another episode out. Via buymeacoffee.com slash aworldbiketour you can top up our budget for more coffee, desperately needed equipment, food and accommodation supporting our independently produced niche content. By supporting us on a monthly basis, you can get your name in the list of contributors, early access to our latest episodes, postcards from faraway countries and more. Since recently, you can even send all your money to paypal.me slash amazingworldbiketour. I'm not saying you should, but you could. Links are in the description below. In the meantime, you can also watch how we ended up here by clicking on our full playlist from our first pedal strokes all the way to Iran and hopefully far beyond. In any case, hit the like button and leave a comment. We and YouTube absolutely love them. All this helps tremendously in getting our project sustainable. Until next time. And may the wind be in your back.